Now, International Women's Day was observed this week, noting the strides as well as the setbacks women have faced over the years. And according to human rights lawyers who spoke on, Cap on Capitol Hill recently, women's rights in Africa have not been realized. The panelists come from Nigeria, Kenya, Cameroon, and Uganda. Individually, they represent the advancement of women in Africa, but they say they fear for many of their counterparts back home. One 20,000 women dying yearly uh, from torture and uh, gender-targeted crimes is just the minimum. Looking at the statistics, that is the least. There are more than that. The attitude of uh, the, the society uh, generally is uh, very poor towards women. Carol Ajir of Nigeria says that's the reality of many women in Nigeria today, especially widows. Many reasons are given for the ongoing abuse of women in Africa, including archaic laws. Susan Okenyi says this is especially true in domestic relationships. Uganda, up to now, is using the old common law system, where the, the, the law does not recognize marital rape. I would like the parliament to pass the domestic relations bill, which is still languishing in parliament, because it has a provision which incriminates marital rape. That will, will increase the, the, the number of cases of marital rape and also reduce violence against women in homes. Some laws also inhibit women's access to property, making them dependent and even more vulnerable to abuse. Rose Kimoto says only 1% of women are registered landowners in Kenya, a heavily agricultural country. Women are living and working on land which they do not own and which they really cannot ever hope to own if the laws do not really change. And again, it limits uh, women's economic uh, empowerment. The lack of empowerment costs the nation as a whole, says Esther Ayuk of Cameroon, because too often women are excluded from development programs. It was necessary to include women in the programs, bring them on board, because they are the ones who use the land, who use the forest, and so they are the ones who are supposed to know the techniques to be able to preserve the forest, the environment, and the land. Women around the world enjoy more representation in government thanks to the 1995 Beijing Declaration and its target to have 30% of the world's women in decision-making positions. But Monica Voke Igorode says more women of integrity have to achieve political power. If you see affirmative action being used as a tool for chronism, for lip service and tokenism, just putting in women there who may not really know the issues that we want to be dealt with in relation to women's human rights. And once we have women who are not so competent on the political um, corridor of power, it becomes very difficult for issues on women's human rights and advancement to be carried out in the country. The panelists are fellows of the Georgetown University Law Center's annual Leadership and Advocacy for Women in Africa program, which aims to empower women. Julia Erst is the program's executive director. One of our LAWA fellows from our very first class in 1993-1994, Esther Kisake from Uganda, was recently appointed to the Supreme Court of Uganda. So she's going to be in a position now where she really be able to shape the jurisprudence of Uganda uh, for her tenure on the court, which is very exciting.